Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. In every one of our weekly case studies, we look at the anatomy of prosperity, and much of that prosperity is the result of innovation. The USA has become the world's largest economy, mainly because of the new ideas hatched into being here. In an earlier episode, you met a favorite mentor of ours, Michael Novak, and he talked about the soul of the American economy. Today, we want to revisit with our mentor to look at how ideas are taken from mind to market. We'll explore his thoughts on the theology and economics of innovation. Remember, Michael Novak is the author of well over 30 books translated into most major languages and many, many articles about business, ethics, morality, capitalism, and corporations. He holds the George Frederick Jewett Chair of Religion, Philosophy, and Public Policy at the American Enterprise Institute. And in 1994, he received the Million Dollar Templeton Prize for Progress in Religion. Our founders understood that if you're going to build a free republic, you have to build it on commerce and industry. And they, of course, trusted best the small. And that's the basis from which you get an independent citizenry who can act like sovereigns, mm -hmm. who, who are masters of their own destiny, and who know the world because they're, they're interacting to try to create things in a very tough, resistant world. And create we do. American business innovates. America is very attractive for our profession. Basically, industrial design was born in America, uh, Raymond Lowy, etc. So it was kind of developed here. So this is kind of like coming to Mecca. You have to come to America to see where it's all, you know, where it's all come from. There are more than six million patents on file at the U.S. Patent Office. I never had limitations in my mind about what can be done and what cannot be done. I always question things. What if? What if? The word what if is very important. The theology of perfection was preached in the U.S. from the 19th century fiery pulpit of John Wesley. Internally, we all strive for being a perfectionist. Maybe that's what it is. It's the quality we push in ourselves. And as a whole, we push the quality of, of the, the total of the company. We are never satisfied with what we design. If we ever become satisfied in what we do, then that's the end of us meaning that there's always a better way to do it, and there's always a, a way to enhance it. And Michael Novak believes the desire to improve drives discovery, while faith sustains. All right, you say in Business is Calling that small business owners as a segment are more, um, they practice more religion both in attendance at church or synagogue and they maybe believe more religiously than the general public. Well, that's, I was surprised by that, but that's true. There are surveys of the of American elites, 30 or 40 of them, and one of the surprising findings is that among the elites, journalists, lawyers, architects, political activists, Hollywood people, et cetera, doctors, lawyers, and the rest, among those elites, People in business are the most, well, the three in the most religious, leave aside the clergy here, but the three who are the most religious are athletes, the military, and people in business. And among the least religious are Hollywood, journalists, and um, political activists. Now, is he agreeing with you that he's being satisfied, or are we still having that situation? Albert Black is founder of On Target Supplies and Logistics. 
the reason I went into business is the same reason I'm in business today. We wanted to create jobs and to hire people. We think that's God's work, and that's what we wanted to be involved in. Okay, do you think there's a connection between faith, and I mean faith in something bigger than yourself, faith in God, and innovation? There, there certainly is in this sense that, uh, and economic historians who are not religious have observed this, that what gave Jewish and Christian civilizations over thousands of years the confidence to take risks and invent new things because they felt they weren't violating a taboo, nothing terrible was going to happen to them if they went outside the known patterns of nature to discover new patterns. The reason they did that is because they had belief in a creator who created the world at a certain time with a purpose and that the world was going somewhere. While I was driving, this vision came through my head of how mechanically I could do this at a much faster rate using less employees. And I said, thank you, Lord, give me some money. And he did through this friend of mine. And we started. And what we really did is we did something that no one else could do or had done before. Today, Glenn Walzer's invention serves 95% of his industry's global market. The idea of progress is Jewish and Christian. It's not Greek, it's not Roman, it's not Hindu, it's not Buddhist, it's not animist. It's specific. And this, having this faith in God has, has had this impact. Even among people who, who don't now share that faith in God, they still have learned the faith in progress. That, is a gift of that faith. We are at a place that really means very much to me. Lupe Fraga, owner of Tejas Office, took us to the neighborhood he grew up in and spoke about the power of faith in his life. He's not unusual. And I'm really grateful for the faith mm -hmm. that I have been given. Mm -hmm. I think it's a gift. I try to live my life every day in that way, and so this is why this church is so important to me, because I think this is where the foundation was laid. Jose and Luis Navarro have built the most productive pharmacy chain in the U.S. Working seven days a week never kept Jose from church. Oh, my, oh, you had to go to church every Sunday. There is no doubt about skipping church. I mean, church was something that you had to make time for it. It was my, maybe it was at night, you know, after we finished doing the deliveries, but everybody went to church on Sunday. It was uh, something that my mother is adamant about it, and she's still adamant about it now. I mean, See, but somehow we run out. A great many people in business have become more religious because of business activity. Why? Because they are aware of how many things can go wrong, how easy it is to lose your shirt. And they find that it, the belief in God they have gives them a certain objectivity. It's as if they lift themselves outside of time to see things as God might, or they try to and therefore see things with a greater objectivity. And when chance and contingency break in their favor, when things work out right, they know they didn't control all that. Mm -hmm. That's due to something else. So but, are we called, as business people, are we called to courage? Of course. Of course, and people who have the, the wit and even the desire but not the courage can't do it. But if you don't have the courage, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So courage is a very important component of business. We all know plenty of entrepreneurs who ventured and gained. By inventing new products, these brave souls created a new niche, forced an old product to take a back seat, raised the bar, or startled the world with something brand new. But for me, life's an adventure, not creating little comfort you know, ponds. Because I don't believe they, they become, they stay comfortable, you know, you just sort of, they lock you. 1,000, 2,000. It took three years for Ken Duncan to take the panoramic photographs found in his book, America Wide. When I go old, I don't want to say, if only I had it. I, I, I want to say, well, I gave it a go, and man, that was a real adventure, I've got to tell you. You know, I, at least if I fail or succeed, it doesn't matter, because at least I gave it a go. There's a notion of Judaism and Christianity that there's progress and decline. 
and it's the vocation of Jews and Christians to build up the kingdom of God, to be ready for the coming of the Messiah for Jews and for, for Christians believing that the Messiah has come to make ready for the second coming and to make a world of greater justice and love and truth to the best of our ability. Which requires action and action. doing and exactly. getting up every day and trying. And it millions of people doing that. Millions right. of people getting up every day and right. trying to change the world at least a little bit in their little part. That's not universal among religions, but you do find it wherever there are Jews and Christians. And so, as our founders thought, this is the work of providence. Providence is on the side of liberty. God made men and women to make them free. Jefferson said, he was not so much of a believer, but Jefferson said, the God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. It took Steve Hoffman over 20 years of trying to achieve what we see at his company today. 200 employees and 40 million in revenue, but that only after years of working to perfect the printing techniques. Joe Danis, the creator of teaching tools for American Sign Language, spent seven years alone struggling to perfect his ideas. Diversified Chemicals broke through with a new product only after it invested heavily in research, which always includes paying for the cost of failure. So you hit a home run with this? Yes. This is all uh, conceived here in this laboratory through the discussion of people. So that's where uh, our open uh, yep. uh, mindedness helps people come up with ideas where we can uh, uh, implement into practice very, very easily. If you want to develop the Iowa territory where my wife is from, if you want to develop that, don't pick the five most brilliant men in America and have them drop a plan for it. No, give 200,000 families 70 acres each and let them develop it using their heads on their particular soil. Let them decide and using their own practical intelligence because their life depends on it. You can bet your bottom dollar they'll use it well. It's harvest time on one of Bob Cicada's fields in Colorado. The big machines do the work now but Bob shows me the pleasure of picking and tasting his specially developed fresh ear of corn. Here it is. Now why does it taste so good? Put all the nutrients that this corn needs. So it would... Uh, it has everything Everything it needs the corn needs. To be perfect. <clears throat> yeah, to be perfect. Well, about 30 years ago, 35 years ago, uh, I was asked to speak at a, uh, a sweet corn breeders meeting. And uh, there were really outstanding large operators there and uh, I was just a young kid uh, listening to their wisdom and uh, they wanted uh, three years per stock that looked green and uh, uh, higher yield per acre but I thought that I wanted a corn plant that only produced one year per stock mainly because I could see the day that we had to mechanically harvest our corn. You invested your time, your energy, your money to test it and develop this and work with this genetic engineer, but you don't own the seed. No, no. Uh, um, no, I, uh, I think anything that, uh, that would be an advantage to my colleagues in the business, why, why they can have it too. You can invest your whole life savings in developing a new product in the hope that if you do it right, other people will want it, you'll help other people, they would glad to give you their money in exchange for the benefits they will get from this product, and you will benefit. So it becomes a beneficent circle. You help other people, and you benefit by it. Bob Cicada not only works on his product, he, like most of us, works hard on processes. With incremental innovation, we discover faster, better ways to get things done. At the state-of-the-art plant of Coding Sciences, Inc., they make specialty products that are sticky on both sides. Cross Timbers oil geologists use technology to pinpoint reserves others leave behind. Investing in a million-dollar freezer opened the Japanese market to Petrovsky's bagels. Almost every business, almost every industry in America is based on patents on discoveries, and that's the source of wealth, and that's why I call capitalism the mind-centered system. It's a system which sees the wealth that there is in creation and invention and discovery. So all over America, there are people 
trying to earn patents. This is the new look of light, and what you see represents a technology breakthrough. It really is a quantum jump to go from light bulbs to fiber optics. And I see fiber optics as, as the lighting product of the future. We got this photon approaching a lens surface at an angle. Right. Jack and right. Ruth Ellen Miller hold over 100 patents. They launched their company, Nuveer, in 1990, and today its systems are found lighting Thomas Jefferson's handwritten draft of the Declaration of Independence. Marilyn Monroe's white subway dress from the seven-year itch. Fabergé eggs and great art in dozens of museums around the country. Nuveer builds highly specialized lighting products specifically developed for museums, and it has succeeded at establishing a new standard for lighting. The light has no ultraviolet energy and no infrared energy, thus the source of the company's name, no UV and no IR. And now I got so many patents that patent lawyers started hiring us as expert consultants in patent litigation. In, in the Nuveer product line, which comprises the, the projector, and it is really a system itself, and all the different luminaires that go on the ends of the fibers. Okay, we have 16 issued U.S. patents. Michael Novak was smitten by Abraham Lincoln's 1850 lecture on discoveries and inventions. He called for the establishment of the patent office. He was the only president to be awarded a patent, and his words should be cherished by all Americans and, yes, by all people. Let me recite just a few and encourage you to come to the web to read the entire document. Lincoln said, All creation is a mine, and every man a miner. The whole earth and all within it, upon it and round about it, including himself, in his physical, moral, and intellectual nature, and his susceptibilities are the infinitely various leads from which man, from the first, was to dig out his destiny. In the beginning, the mine was unopened, and the miner stood naked and knowledgeless upon it. At the very end of the document, Abraham Lincoln, going well beyond the paraphrasing of the Genesis writer, concludes, Next came the patent laws. These began in England in 1624, and in this country with the adoption of our Constitution. Before then, any man might instantly use what another had invented, so that the inventor had no special advantage for his own invention. The patent system changed this, secured to the inventor for a limited time the exclusive use of his invention, and thereby added the fuel of interest to the fire of genius in the discovery and production of new and useful things. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. To learn more about this episode, choose the overview. You can read every word you're hearing today when you choose the transcript and go deeper with the case study. There's streaming video and access to interactive study guides throughout the site. Every single piece of cutting edge technology in the world is probably resident here in our offices right now. And if you told us, you'd have to kill us. <laughs> well, it's not that bad. But we're talking about things all the way from gene sequences to new software that's being developed to improved mousetraps. This is Todd Dickinson, a former invention. U.S. Commissioner of yeah, Patents and Trademarks. In the original system came to us from, from Great Britain, but we incorporated it in our Constitution, which I think firmly fixed it in the American system. Uh, that has been one of the... Uh, I'd say it's been one of the key parts of the Constitution in terms of the economic development of our country and the world. So uh, why is, is pa the patent and trademark concept so important to democratic capitalism? Well, what's interesting, I think, is that the invention system, which the patent system supports, is probably democracy uh, at its purest. That somebody with one idea, which they come to on their own or in collaboration with a, just a couple of other folks, can take that idea that has never existed before, because to be patentable invention, it has to be brand new, and to take that invention and, and basically run with it, and to build something from it, to build a, build a business from it, unfettered by anybody else, uh, that's, I think, the essence of, uh, of capitalism. 
Sora Vasugi is the founder of Ziba Design. Well, this product, uh, Quere Squeegee, is actually, I could say, the, the product that really launched us. I mean, it got a lot of publicity. We found that the T-handle and the squeegee mm -hmm. is actually created for reach, mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, extend your hand to, uh, above your height to clean the windows. And also, so for an inside uh, enclosure of a ba uh, shower, uh, it's very tight and you, don't, you can't use that. It's very cumbersome. So in one year he sold how he many? He sold $16 million worth of these. <laughs> in one year? In, this, in one year, in the second year. And he had two people, himself and another salesman. So you can um, uh, imagine $8 million per employee. If this is not a permanent collection of Smithsonian uh, Museum. So it's been a very famous product and really people a lot of times connotate uh, you know kind of relate us to oh these are the people who did the squeegee you're the squeegee guys yeah the squeegee guys while zebra design launches new products many others launch innovative services today build postcards online at modern postcard get a hot stone massage at gadabout have your office supplies delivered to the desk rather than the dock take a tour of boston on a world war ii amphibious vehicle have your offices designed for beauty and efficiency. Find the love of your life at eHarmony.com or live in a smart house kept smart by the builder. I thought what's really new about the world, Lincoln caught better uh, in an address. He gave a wonderful talk on the six great moments in the history of liberty, starting with Adam and Eve. And one of the moments which really surprised me was the Patent and Copyright Act. And he says that was so brilliant. And I'm going to say it in my own words, but his words are eloquent. But in my own words, it was that, that for the first time in history, the main form of wealth will not be land, as it had been, even in the Homestead Act, 70 acres for the claim. But the intelligence, the ideas, the insights that led people to treat their land or anything else in a new way. The main cause of wealth would be the head. I, I like to say kaput, that for the, the root word term for capital. That's what capitalism is. It's the first system organized around the mind, around invention and discovery. <laughs> Ideas matter more than ever before, and it's astonishing how many things are born in someone's mind, and something comes to be that was never there. Ideas are really very, very powerful because God gave us minds to improve. God invited human beings to take part in his own creation, to be co-creators with God and bring out of the earth things that are, uh, lie fallow and hidden there. And many believe that their ideas come from their maker. I prayed to the Lord. I said, uh, Lord, you know my situation. And many practice giving thanks. I've been so blessed. God, really, I mean, I've gotten so much out of this life that sometimes I'm embarrassed. Well, our vision statement is to show the beauty of God's creation. That's it. I just want to open people up to the potential of bigger pictures. All I'm trying to say is, hey, look, there's something out there maybe bigger than us. When you're out in these wonderful places, the less of you, the more you can sense God's awesome creation. And for so many, Faith strengthens. Uh, the first thing I get up in the morning, I sit on the side of the bed and pound my fists and thank God for giving me another day and all the blessing that He bestowed upon me. And the way you could really believe that truly is to just look out there, look out there and see that beauty. Whatever character that I may be able to have was formed by my grandmother. To treat people with passion, Christian passion, to always look out, as she would say, for the other fella. To do what you say you're going to do. To take care of others before you take care of yourself. To tell the truth. To love and expect to be loved. To put God first your family second, and everything else somewhere after that. So what have we learned from Michael Novak? 
Innovation is rooted in interiority, which is understanding something profoundly within, whether it be within the heart of people, the functions of a product, or the processes within a service. You have to go deep, spend some time within that inspired moment, within that aha, within that awakening from dogmatic slumber, and what will emerge just might be the next big thing. And you can be sure of one thing, we'll be here cheering you on. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.